Hey everybody, on today's episode of Still To Be Determined, we're gonna talk about 3D printing homes. Are they dirt cheap or are they dirt expensive? Before we get into that, just a reminder of who we are. I'm Sean Farrell, I'm Matt's older brother, and of course Matt is the Matt behind Undecided with Matt Farrell. Matt, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? How's your weekend? A little wet right now, but otherwise seems to be okay. We're going to be talking today about Matt's most recent episode. This dropped on March 1st, 2022. The truth about 3D printed homes. The truth is they're actually two-dimensional. Dun, dun, dun. No, that's (laughs) not true. Today, I think what we're going to be doing is looking at comments Because the comments raised a number of issues that I thought really guide the conversation that I'd like to have about this. And don't forget to the listeners, you can jump into the comments and weigh in as well on his channel. And you can also weigh in on the comments here to continue the conversation. The first comment that stuck out for me was from Private Mail. He's a private mail for money. No, that's not. (laughs) (laughs) A little private dancer joke. Private writes, I personally like the brick option more. He's talking about things that you've referred to in previous episodes on your channel. Most recently, we talked about hemp bricks. We've talked about other modes of brick production that these videos largely are around moving away from what we consider traditional building techniques or building materials. Yep. So what we're talking about in some cases is a change in technique like this one. You're yes. still using a concrete. You're using some kind of slurry, which is going to be similar to other buildings or the alternative to building materials doesn't necessarily change how the home is built. And that would be something like a hemp brick. Right. So when Private refers to the molded brick. He writes, molded interlocking hempcrete or compressed earth blocks. Easy to mix with traditional construction. Easy to assemble. Good insulation and fire resistance. Some options can be manufactured on site. Made me wonder if you were to, if cost was no concern. Right. Which of these do you think you would lean toward? Would you be Uh, like private? Would you be looking at the brick option or would you be thinking a 3D printed home? That's the wave of the future. For me, I'd be leaning more in the alternate material direction. I'd be leaning towards the hempcrete. Like I've talked about this numerous times, but I'm I'm actually working on building a new house for myself. That's going to be a very energy efficient home and it's going to be a manufactured built home. So it's like, that's another thing I'm very interested in, which is a technique difference. (laughs) <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of building on site you're building in a factory but th- those techniques are where i lean versus 3d printing because i think 3d printing is still very early stages and so there's an aspect of it that's kind of like got to work out some more of these kinks <laughs> before right before i think it's a real thing do you think that one of the concerns about 3d printed homes is the effect that it has on the shape of the space created we i think culturally yeah are inclined to think of our living space in forms of right angles. Yep. It's in some cases, you might even have a home that has a room which isn't perfectly squared at the corners. But even if you have that, it's easy to define walls as being things that are straight as opposed yeah, to flat rectangles. Many of the <laughs> 3D, many of the 3D models that you've talked about, and not all of them, that's to be sure, but many of them have incorporated in some cases, rounded corners. In other cases, actually 360 degree round room shape. Yep. Do you think that that plays a part in our ability to adapt to this kind of thing? And do you think that it's mirrored in the kinds of furnitures and living objects that we're accustomed to? You mean like, do I think it's going to be like the shape is going to dictate whether this works or not? Like we're going to lean into Do you think it plays a part? Like you go furniture shopping, you just 3D printed your your new home. It's round living room needs a sofa and well, sofas tend to be flat and straight. And how much of that do you think plays a part in, I guess the question dissolves down into the nugget of is the newness of this, the strangeness of this, 
keeping it from being easily yeah. identified as this is yeah, a good I option. Where, I see where you're going. I would say yes. It's not a perfect technology. It's like when the Cybertruck was announced, everybody was just like, holy crap, that truck is ugly. It's like there was this whole freak out over how foreign that looked as a truck. Right. It's like new things tend to like, I mean, like really new avant-garde kind of things tend to make us kind of reel back. It's kind of mm-hmm. like the lizard brain taking over. And I think there's a little bit of that with this, especially with the way it looks, because a lot of times if it's the unfinished 3D printed, you have like these like little ridges. Yeah. And so it's a very distinct look. You can flatten that out and put like basically stucco over it, and make it look more flat and normal if you wanted to. But I don't think that's going to necessarily hold back 3D printing because you could print 3D printed houses that are straight walls, but you can right. also, it opens up the options of doing rounded. There's a YouTube channel, Matt Rensinger, which I'm sure a lot of people who watch my channel know that channel. He's a builder that lives in, I think, Austin, Texas, but he builds sustainable homes all over the place. And he had a video that just came out about the company Icon just built this beautiful, built from the ground up, designed from the ground up as a 3D home. And one of the limitations for 3D homes right now is you can't build multi-story buildings. You basically, first floor only. And so this house was designed as a kind of single story house that is 3D printed walls with like, you know, wood rafters and regular roof and all that kind of stuff. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I think anybody would kill to have that home. So I don't think it's going to necessarily hold it back, but I think people are going to kind of raise an eyebrow when they hear that it's 3D printed. I think because it's so new, they're going to be unsure. How, how well does this hold up over time? You know? I'm like, if I run into problems, how do I fix this? It's, I think that's going to be the thing that's going to hold it back more of right. not how it looks, but the questions around longevity and repairability and maintenance. I think that's going to be where people are going to raise, raise an eyebrow. Mm-hmm. In your research, was there anything about 3D printing of homes where it's not literally the entire structure being 3, 3D printed, but components being 3D printed and then being assembled somewhere? on the building site like does that exist as a as yes. a concept yes i'm blanking the name of the company but there's a company that actually does it's like a manufactured 3d printed home where they're basically built they're printing the floor part of the walls and the, the the ceiling and then everything else is kind of like more standard materials that are using to finish it out and then it's mm-hmm. like shipped to the location and assembled on site mm-hmm. so like there are companies that are doing kind of like a hybrid approach like you like you just mentioned. So it's like I was coming across all different kinds of techniques and styles that people are experimenting with. Right. One of the things that you discussed in your video was the basically earth clay being used yes. as yeah. the building material. So you move into an area where you are able to pull up the soil itself, the material of the the construction is right on site convert that into your basically concrete slurry and then you're printing with that which led to this comment from joe b joe writes one thing not mentioned bugs (laughs) i lived in a mud brick house in australia for 16 years and borer bugs were a huge huge problem had to seal every millimeter of the bricks with a thick layer of plastic paint or the whole thing would have been a big nest for varieties of bees and wasps the mud brick has some cement in it, so it was harder than just dried clay, but the bugs loved it. Mm-hmm. Interesting take. Yes. Something I'm wondering, did you see anything about environmental impact from that direction? Not the environmental impact from what humans are doing to the environment, but what right. the environment use in that way, actually pulling your materials from the soil, the potential incorporation of that kind of infestation into a structure that's built did you see anything around that about sealing of right. homes about you know, you've built your 3d home now it's going to become the world's largest beehive would be a problem <laughs> we we didn't when we were looking into this and my team was pulling all the research together most of these 3d printed homes tend to be some kind of cement slurry so they're not going to have this problem at all because it's basically just cement walls but like this one that i talked about from the the italian architecture firm that actually use this clay. It's a clay house. So yeah, there's the potential that there are going to be bugs that will bore into it. The one thing I would raise though is my house is built out of wood and termites can be a problem. So it's like, it's not that 
it's not that this is necessarily, oh, this is so much worse than standard stuff. It's like my current house is slowly rotting and there are probably bugs on my walls eating my wood right now. Right. So it's, it's, it's kind of just the nature of the beast of just living. So the question is, how long does it hold up? That I have no idea. We didn't come across some good results because like I said, printing a clay house, this is like the first of its kind. So there really is no longevity studies in that specific right. instance, which is why we didn't come across anything. Right. I also you know, wonder about the, the usage of that kind of tech would be in situations where you might want to take it into areas where people might be living in situations where that wouldn't be seen as a terrible issue to begin with, as yep. opposed, because this isn't the sort of thing where we're talking about, okay, we're going to 3D print you an earth house in the middle of Boston. This is not no. What, no. We're, what we're talking about. Yeah. The case scenarios that you talked about in your video were potentially remote, very rural locations. And I can imagine that the usage of those houses, that they would have a finite amount of time to them as well. Wouldn't mm -hmm. they be potentially something that would be, it's constructed and then within a few years, it might be dilapidated to the point where you just 3D print another one? Or do you think mm -hmm. that these are foreseen as being construction that would withstand time? They should be able to withstand time. It's like, how long? I don't know. But everything that we were saying was houses like the, the mud, mud brick or clay. It's like you can build houses like that that will stand the test of time. But it also depends on where are you building this house? What kind of weather and environment is it going to be subjected to? So it's not like a one size fits all thing. Right. There was also this comment from Calisthenes who wrote, so glad to finally see a balanced presentation on 3D printed housing. As an architect who has been fascinated by additive manufacturing for decades now, all of the misinformation around this topic is a concern. I'm wondering, Calisthenes does not continue there with the misinformation around mm -hmm. this. In your research, in your video, you talked about the hype, the yes. hype around this and the misstatements. Like, I think the most fascinating one was we can 3D print you a house for $4,000. Wasn't that the, the figure? Mm -hmm. Well, that one and, was a complete and the very and the company's reporting. response saying we don't know where that number ever came, came from. from. Yep, I couldn't help but wonder if somebody somewhere said, "Yeah, it's four thousand dollars per cubic yard," or like gave and the, some and sort the journalist of value. Totally and the journalist is like four thousand dollars for a house. That's amazing. Yes. What were some of the other bits of misinformation that you came across in your video that you wanted to make sure that you touched on or and was there anything that you didn't include in the video that you think is worth bringing up now let me reframe that a little bit because this is the second time i've talked about 3d printing houses mm -hmm. my first one i didn't get sucked into the hype machine but i did get into hype adjacent where it was like i was talking about some of these things that were kind of flirting with some of these things. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to bring them up in this video, which was to kind of go a little deeper. The biggest ones were how fast it is to do, how you need so much less labor and, and then over the overall, like just the speed, the cost and the labor. It was like, those were the three things that to me were the biggest hype. And then the fourth one, if I was going to bring a fourth one in would be, this will cure homelessness. Because we can print, because you can print a house in three days, we can pump out these houses and solve the homeless crisis. And it's like, that's not true because the speed is a complete, is a complete misinformation. And as I pointed out, it's because these are the walls. This is not the floor. This is not the ceiling. This is not a multi-story building. This is not putting in the electrical, the plumbing, all that. it's like, that still takes a lot of labor <laughs> to do right. all that stuff. So yeah, you can basically build the foundation and the the wall's crazy fast and at an affordable price, but then you still have all the labor and the requirements and everything else that goes into everything else of the building. So it's not, you're not making a house in three days. You're making a portion of the house in three days or right. four days or whatever it is. So that's where th the biggest misinformation comes from. And the whole idea that you'd be able to solve the homeless crisis when, when you actually look at the number of people that don't have proper housing, as I brought up in the video, it's an insurmountable <laughs> number. <laughs> Yeah, that we have to hit. So it's those are the things that are getting way overhyped. This comment from Calisthenes also spurred on some conversation in response to their comment, which mm -hmm. somebody asked the question, do you think we'll ever get a printed high rise? To which somebody responded, Germany is already doing multi-level 3D printing and their next certification is for high rises. 
So hmm. yes. And I wondered, did you have any experience with coming across that information or anything similar to that? Or is this news to you? That's news to me because everything I've found is that nobody, basically nobody has authorized multi-story buildings for actual use. Like it's still being tested and approved at different countries around the world. I hadn't come across that Germany had actually done it. If that's the case, that's news to me. And mm -hmm. Surprising. It's it was a, it was inevitable at some point that we'd figure out how to do it. My question would be is like, how tall of a building can you make? Because right. that's uh, makes me a little nervous. Well, you would hope. I mean, if you were to describe a high rise to somebody who was alive in the early nineteenth century, and mention, yes, eventually we'll have buildings that will easily be above twenty stories. They would have said, like. You know, but well, that sounds insane. I think if you were to look at, you've talked about the cost, you've talked about the realistic time frame. What is driving this technology is the hope amongst the researchers and the people who are trying to utilize it to eventually gain some benefit from it. Absolutely. You do not develop a technology like this if it turns out to be apples to apples, where Building a house doesn't cost any less, takes just as much time and just as much labor. This technology will not catch on if it doesn't have any It has to benefit. be better. It has to be better. So it has to be better. And it seems to me going hand in hand with that would be there are people who are hoping for the potential of it taking that next step of being able to do multi-story, including yep. potentially beyond two stories, beyond three stories. So I think that this is one of those moments where you and I are looking at it and saying like, I can't imagine that, but a hundred years from now, it's, it may be the norm, it may be the norm that you have a giant structure that is effectively a self growing 3d printed building. Well, one of the reasons I keep talking about 3d printing in a bunch of different videos from houses to semiconductors and things like that, I'm fascinated by additive manufacturing because the more I learn about it, the more I realize this is the future of everything. Like we, can, <laughs> it is, we're heading towards the Star Trek future where you basically have a machine, you push a button and it makes five different things mm -hmm. without having to change tooling and the machinery. The machine just prints whatever you need and that we're heading towards that really fast. And the fact that there's a company that's making rockets that are going to fly to space, they are printing 3D rockets with basically 3D printing metal, which is it makes my brain hurt. It's like we can literally print anything and we're learning how to do that and we're getting mm -hmm. better and better at it. So I have no doubt in a hundred years, there are going to be plenty of buildings, skyscrapers, all that kind of stuff. There'll be parts of it will be 3D printed or it'll be fully 3D printed or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those when I go, yee, about the, the, the Germany building a multi. These things are meant to like flex and sway with the wind if they're super tall and all this kind of stuff. It's like, well, can a concrete building, if they're doing it with concrete, actually do it right or is it going to just like crumble and fall down when a right. strong wind comes by now obviously the engineers are going to figure this out but it's like because we've never seen it and i have and this is news to me it's like i, I really want to dive into it now because it's like curious how tall it's actually going to be and how are they actually going to do it what's going to be 3 3d printed and what's not going to be 3d printed because i think that's going to be kind of the key lesson there right i think this comment is a good one to end on this one's from save money save the planet Save writes, the reason I don't buy the 3D printed home hype is because construction isn't a huge problem for us. Corporate landlords buying all property and single family home zoning are the problems really hurting us. I think that's an interesting angle to take. It kind of goes hand in hand with what we were saying that if it's apples to apples, if the construction isn't saving something, then it's not going to take on, it's not going to catch on. And Save points out that there are also other issues about land use, about how many people are having access to certain areas of land mm -hmm. that are driving concerns about things like homelessness and also congestion, access to goods like you can't 3D print your way into having a grocery store at the corner. Nope. So things like that, the smart urban planning, smart community planning are, are key. Save continues with this additional comment. Also, the reason 3D printing is such a big deal in manufacturing is because it allows you to do, to do designs that are just impossible with other methods like injection mm -hmm. molding or extrusion. It allows you to do this while keeping the cost low, 
because you don't have to purchase tooling. 3D printed homes aren't pushing against these issues, so they're unable to get the same benefits. I think that's a pretty good perspective on what we've been talking about. There has to be a development of the technology potentially at some point to say, oh, you really are saving on costs from labor or time or overall expense. Until yep. that happens, this is just another parallel mode of building construction. Right. And, and w- when I sp- brought up the, the myth of the speed because you can only print the walls and everything else is normal and it still takes that labor, this is like, it's not like there's a technology that's going to come in and solve from A to Z of building a home. This is solving A to C and the rest right. we have to solve. It's like, if this saves time and labor on this specific portion of building a house, the construction industry will probably look at that as a win because it's yeah. going to save time and money. Mm-hmm. So it's if that actually does pan out, even though it's only one portion of the home build, I think we're going to see more and more and more of this. So I do agree with his comment, but I think there's a little nuance to it. It's not that it has to solve all of the house build. It just has to solve the part that is meant to be solved for. Like what, what, is, it, what is it trying to solve? What is its purpose? I agree. It seems very much like the conversation is one around what is happening right now and what would have to happen for this to be the yep. next thing. Yep. And from where I'm sitting, it looks like we're still too early days to say, yeah. oh, clearly we've got an opportunity here. But it's fascinating to see the research and the experimentation that's going on with this, the people who are really trying to push this in new directions and take a technology which when it was first introduced it seemed very much like oh 3d printing it'll be small little doodads yeah 3d printed little doodads will be great and now we're actually talking about 3d printing homes which or skyscrapers (laughs) yeah or skyscrapers which to my old brain just says yeah So listeners, let us know what you think. Do you agree that this is too early to tell or have you weighed in and said, nope, this isn't it. This is, this just isn't going to take off. Let us know in the comments or you can reach out through the contact information in the podcast description. Don't forget, if you'd like to support the show, you can leave a review on Apple or Google or Spotify, wherever it is that you're listening to us. You can also do it on YouTube. And if you'd like to more directly support us, you can go to stilltbd.fm, click on the Become Supporter button, and then throw coins at our heads. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening or watching, and we'll see you in the next one.